Um, can't the IRS, you know, we've had various con- controversies and so on about the IRS. Can't the IRS, well, I guess they can't because it was written into law. Normally, the yeah. IRS would be able to go in and say, look, you're not functioning as a, as a trade group. You're functioning as a profit-making organization, and we're going to change your status. But because Congress wrote this into law, I assume that what you're saying is that the IRS doesn't have the power to change this. Is that right? No, they don't, because the specific language says professional football leagues, which is, honestly, some NFL lobbyist in heaven right now is getting their wings for somehow figuring out a way to get that stuck into an unrelated bill back in the 60s. I live in Washington, and I've checked around. Nobody can really figure out how this actually happened. Um, the good news here is that a few people in Congress have actually taken notice of this. Uh, Senator Tom Coburn, uh, you know, very conservative senator right. of Oklahoma, and uh, Angus King, uh, you know, independent senator, uh, are co-sponsoring a bill to change the law to get rid of this exception, not just for the NFL, but a couple of other sports leagues have found a way to take advantage of this too, the NHL, the PGA Tour. Uh, they want to get rid of this exception because it's, you know, rightfully so. It's pretty ridiculous. It's unnecessary. It's basically a government handout that they don't need and that, you know, I don't know if you, you know, your listeners watch the news, and the rest of us do need money at this point. Um, you know, we're pretty broke as a country right now. Um, and I'm hoping that because it's getting some attention, and so are these, these senators, that there'll be some public school groundswell behind this. There actually is a change.org petition that has well over 300,000 signatures asking for the same thing. So basically, when people find out that this is going on, whether they're Republican, whether they're Democrat, whether they're liberal, whether they're conservative, whether they like football or hate football, everyone in America basically agrees we don't need to be giving the NFL extra money. Well, two, uh, yeah, and a couple comments about that. One is, of course, there are those of us who liked football and then hated it after last weekend. But, um, uh, and I should note that Angus King is not the former guitar player for ACDC. Different guy, but... Uh, <laughs> right. We Which have listeners awesome who would be awesome if he was in the U.S. Senate. It though, would right? be totally awesome, but those short pants wouldn't look appropriate in the Capitol building. Um, having said that, uh, you know, this really should be, uh, I agree with you, this should be an issue that unites liberals and conservatives, Democrats and Republicans, because if you're a conser- if you're a liberal, then you, you believe that the government needs this money to put people back to work and, and do good things. If you're a conservative, I f- you should believe that the free market should not be corrupted by these tax giveaways treating one form of entertainment business, which is what the uh, uh, NFL is, uh, preferentially in the way that it's being done. And, you know, it starts to add up. I mean, they, they throw around big... Uh, numbers at, at budget time because they usually use 10-year projections but if you're talking about the taxes on nine billion dollars a year you could uh, expand a lot of people's uh, social security with that so is anybody looking at what the impact the financial impact of this uh, Coburn King bill might be you know the Coburn King bill bill would be uh, in some ways as much a symbolic impact as financial I mean it would be a couple of million dollars a year which is again nothing to sneeze at a couple million dollars a year can still fund all kinds of things, or it can be a small, you know, it's, it's, for, you know, from a conservative perspective, that's a couple million dollars the year of taxes you have to raise. So, like you said, either, whatever side of the spectrum you're on, this is one of those rare issues where pretty much everybody can get together, hold hands, and do something good that they feel good about. Um, but, you know, the, the, the breaks for the NFL go beyond just the league office being tax exempt. The biggest giveaways, as most people know, are the stadium subsidies. Oh, but it's not yeah. just it's not just the local and the state governments that are paying like for instance in Minnesota they're paying more than half a billion dollars to build the Vikings a new stadium um, even though the owner of the team is a billionaire. Um, right and you mentioned by the way speaking or one of the articles mentioned about Minnesota that they have slightly over a billion dollar deficit so that would have been 50% of their deficit if they wanted to use the money that way so in the, in, in in no absolutely i mean i i think what we're seeing and we're going to re- you know if you're able to listen to the rest of the show or not i don't know but we're going to go back to the issue of money in politics i think what this speaks to is the fact that money including nfl money is pol- is corrupting the political process from the a national level all the way down to the local level so as we as we sign out on this i guess besides passing this law oh by the way there's also a story that the nfl at least uh, 
one of the teams is uh, seems to be violating labor laws with cheerleaders and so on. Um, so as we fade out on this, uh, any last uh, word of advice for our listeners uh, on where they can read more of your writing on this topic or how they should follow this story? Sure. I mean, you know, if you want to read more of what I've written, you know, check out my article at Politico magazine online it's called the National Free Loader League. Uh, you can also follow me. I, reg- I write regularly at this website called Sports on Earth. So I do a lot of stuff on politics, sports, and culture and how they intersect. And I've written a lot about this topic of sports welfare because, sadly, it's not just the NFL. It's all sports that it sort of has their hand in the public trial. Um, and, you, but, and you know what's ironic about that, Pat, is that sport is supposed to be the embodiment of free, uh, literal level playing field and free competition among people. And yet when it comes to the economic aspects of sporting, it, it feels that they don't believe in it. No, it's kind of like they're using performance enhancing drugs. The, de- the, you know, the deck is rigged. Like, you know, these leagues are, are one way or another, they're getting public handouts. And even if we could afford it, they're doing very well in the private market. They don't need the help. Well, on that note, we're going to have to leave it. We've been talking to Patrick Ruby, who writes for Politico and a number of other magazines on sports and other topics. And the topic has been the National Freeloader League. Uh, Pat, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Take care. And this is RJ Escow, and we will be back after these announcements with more of the Zero Hour. <laughs>